Hi, I'm Mitch Garvis, and today I'm going to show you how to enable failover clustering, create a highly available virtual machine, and take a regular virtual machine and make it highly available all in Windows Server 2012. Now, failover clustering is a feature, so normally I would use the Add Roles and Features wizard, click Next, Run Role Based, select my local host, click Next, click Next on the server roles because it is a feature, click there, and accept that I'm going to add all of the features that are required for failover clustering, including the management tools. I'll click Add, Next, and at this point I would click Install. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to cancel out, and we're going to do it with PowerShell instead. Now, because we're adding a role or feature to the server, it does have to be run with administrative credentials. So I'm going to start it, run as administrator, and I will use the command install Windows feature, name failover-clustering, and of course I want to include those management tools. It's only going to take a few seconds, under a minute to install, and then I'm going to be done. Now while we're waiting for this installation to complete, remember we also have to install failover clustering or enable failover clustering on a second server because a single node cluster is very boring. So normally what I would do, I would go to my remote server, in this case it's going to be called SWMI host 6, and install that role or feature as well. But instead of that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the same PowerShell command and type in computer name SWMI host 6 and I'm going to, from without leaving my chair, install the feature on my remote server as well. It makes my life a lot easier when I can use the same PowerShell commands. I keep telling you that PowerShell will make your life as an IT professional much easier if you only give it a chance. So we see that the installation is on its way on SWMI host 6 and within a few seconds it's going to be done. I'm letting this run in real time so that you can see how long it really takes. So there it is, it's done, I'm going to exit from there, and I'll notice that in my server manager under tools, I now have the failover cluster manager ready to go. So I'll start that up, and it will take a few seconds to come up because it is the first time that I'm running it. And here it is. Now, every time you create a cluster, you should validate the configuration, but the Create Cluster Wizard will do that for me, so I'm going to bypass it for the time being. I'll click Next. I'll enter the names of my servers, SWMI Host 5 and SWMI Host 6. Now it may take a few seconds, but as long as these servers are successfully added to the se selected servers list, I will be able to proceed and validate my cluster. If one of these servers is already a node in another cluster, then it would give me a warning and not allow me to proceed. So now that we see the two servers have been added to the selected servers list, I'll click Next. Yes, I want to run the validation test before continuing. I'll click Next to continue. Run all tests as is recommended. Click Next and it's now ready to start the validation tests. I'll click Next and we're off to the races and I'll see you back in a few minutes after these tests have been run. Now that my validation tests have completed successfully, I'm going to create the cluster itself. I'm going to call it SWMI Cluster and I'm going to give it a IP address of 192.168.0.250. Now, if the server that you're creating the cluster is on is DHCP enabled, then you may have issues with this. You may not see this screen. I strongly recommend that you assign static IP addresses to all of the nodes in your cluster. I'll click Next. It'll validate these settings. 
And I'm going to make sure that on the confirmation page, I've selected the Add All Eligible Storage to the Cluster checkbox. Once I do that, I click Next, and my cluster will be created. That process took under a minute, but I've zoomed through it so that we could get right to the good stuff. We see that my cluster has been created successfully. I can view the report. It's telling me that I have node and disk majority, which in an even node cluster is very important, and there are no warnings. That's good. I can now click on Finish, and in my navigation pane, my failover cluster called SWMI cluster will appear in a couple of seconds. Here it is, and I'm going to expand it. First I want to make sure that I have two nodes, SWMI host 5 and SWMI host 6. I'm going to expand storage and click on disks and see what I have here. So I have my cluster disk 2 which is available storage and that is the 140 gigabytes, and I have my disk witness in quorum, which is cluster disk 1, which is 1 gigabyte, which is even overkill for that. I'm going to right click on cluster disk 2, and I'm going to click add to cluster shared volumes. What cluster shared volumes is, is a contiguous namespace for all of my cluster resources, or for all of my LUNs, rather than having to assign and make sure that they are all that all of the IP or all of the drive letters for each LUN is the same across my uh, my cluster. On my C drive, I'm going to have a directory called cluster storage, and under cluster storage, I have a directory called volume one. You will notice that the size is 146 uh, million kilobytes, which is about 140 gigabytes. No matter how big my C drive is that cluster storage is a portal to my LUN. So now, now that I have my storage in order and my nodes in order, I'm going to click on Roles, and I'm going to click on Virtual Machine and create a new virtual machine. I'm going to start it up on host SWMI Host 5. And it brings up the new virtual machine wizard just like it would in Hyper-V Manager, but I'm going to call this one HAVM, or Highly Available Virtual Machine 1. Rather than storing it in my C colon VMs, I'm going to store it under C colon Cluster Storage Volume 1, which is going to be on my SAN LUN. I'm going to use Dynamic Memory. Next, I'm going to connect it to my external network. Next, and I'm going to make sure that my storage for it is also stored on my cluster storage volume 1. Good. I'm going to limit the size of that drive to 40 gigabytes. Click Next. We'll install an operating system later. And this highly available virtual machine, whoops, would have been created if I didn't already have a drive there called HAVM1 from a previous demo. So I'm just going to rename this HAVM1, click Next, install an OS later, click Finish, and my highly available virtual machine has been created successfully. Good. But creating a new virtual machine is one thing. How do I take an existing virtual machine that exists on a host that's already a node in the cluster and make it highly available? To do that, we're going to take SWMI DC1, my domain controller, or one of my domain controllers. I'm going to right-click on that, and I'm going to say Move. Now, before I can make a virtual machine highly available, I have to move the virtual machine storage into a shared store. So I'll move the virtual machine storage, move it all to a single location on my SWMI host 6, on my C drive, on my C drive, Cluster Storage Volume 1, and it says it's going to be about 10 gigabytes, so that's how long it will take a few minutes to move that. So I'm going to click Finish, and it will begin the move process. We see that it is moving, and we'll be back as soon as this move is done. Now that my move has succeeded, I can now go back into my Failover Cluster Manager, and I can cl click on Configure Role. Click Next. 
I'm going to scroll down the list of types of role, click on virtual machine. I'll click next. And now it's going to show me a list of all of the virtual machines that I have on all of the nodes in my cluster. This is a great improvement over the previous iteration where I had to shut down a virtual machine in order to make it highly available. Now I can just select it. I can still shut it down if I want, but I'm not going to. I'm going to click Next, and it is going to make it highly available for me. It shouldn't take too long, just a minute or two. And now my virtual machine has been made highly available. So now I see, I'm going to expand this out, we see that it is running on SWMI host 6. I'm going to right click on the virtual machine, click move, live migration. Now if I said best possible node, this node is probably about equal to the other node, so it's not going to move it. But if I click select node, I'll notice that I have SWMI host 5, which is an option, so I'll click OK, and it says live migrating, and we see the progress here. It doesn't take very long because it's only moving the live memory state, and it's done in a matter of seconds, and it is now running on SWMI host 5 without any loss of information. So in this presentation, we have shown you how to enable failover cluster manager on both your hosts, how to configure your storage, how to create a highly available virtual machine, and how to make an existing virtual machine highly available using the failover cluster manager. That's our demo, and thanks for watching.